Hi everyone, uh, welcome back to my channel and another little painting demo. Um, today this is all about painting from sketches, watercolour sketches that you may have done when you're outside and everything. Now this sketch here I did gosh, some years ago and it was, it's at a place uh, just out, not far from where I live um, of the Malvern Hills here. You can see the Malvern Hills in the background and some trees in the front. And there was like a, a cornfield or something that was dried up, you know, it was just over basically in the front. Now I really like this view and I like the sort of letterbox style you know double page spread of it too but I want to produce a much smaller watercolour of it which I've got down here. Um, I like the overall layout of the painting uh, but I don't, I'm not keen on the foreground so what I've done is there was a gate further this way so that took me into the field so um, I've sort of pulled back a bit and I've created a little bit of my own um, creativity coming in here, you know, artistic license, that's the word I want, uh, to uh, build up the front areas. Uh, but I want to get a nice summery feel to this and some nice colour, some wildflowers in the foreground, um, uh, get the gate in, that sort of stuff, and uh, just make it look like a nice summery picture. And it's going to be painted in that letterbox uh, format and we can see how that looks what it comes out like so uh, I'll be working from the sketch just as a rough guide but that that helped me prepare the drawing and everything um, but I'll be changing a lot of the colors and things like that so it's all about using your sketches how you can use them you don't have to use them just the way they are you can be more more creative and build up ideas um, you know take them out of the step you know uh, you know places change throughout the season that view there will constantly change that field will constantly change it won't look the same um different colors and everything like that so and the mountain the, the the hills in the background won't look the same the trees won't look the same and of course the sky won't look the same so you don't have to be a slave to the picture you've created and sort of paint it that way you can think to yourself well how would i like to see it and that's what this video is about really using your sketches in different ways okay so we'll get started Um, I'm just going to have, because the sky is quite small, I'm just going to have a simple uh, uh, blue for the sky. I might put a little bit of colour in there as well. But I want to keep this, I'm using the hot pressed paper again, the £140 hot pressed. Um, and I want to see how it, I want to paint really loosely with this one today, as I would if I was painting on Arsh, um, £140, uh, not surface because I paint on that in quite a loose way. And I want to try it on the, um, see how, how it goes on this, see what the same what control is. And, and I want to also look at sort of softening edges. I've got a couple of paintings that will be coming onto YouTube soon where I've been concentrating on doing paintings where I've had to soften a lot of edges, which I find the hot press works really well for. So we'll get on with this. So I'm just going to have a little, I don't want to trip over the painting if I can help it. A little bit of uh, cobalt blue. A little bit of cerulean blue mixed together. I like that combination. And I might just have a little bit of magenta at the bottom of the sky with a little bit of Naples yellow. Just to give it a bit of variation. I might just spray it a little bit as well. Let's keep this picture moving so we can um, make it really fluid the idea. Right, let's get our blue in. So I'll change my blue a bit. So now I'm going to go to a bit more cobalt. I'm not going to put any clouds in because it's quite quite a small area and it will look fiddly. A little bit of magenta. Too much really. But we've got to remember it will dry lighter. You've got to you've got to be careful with this hot press paper because if you let leave the paint on there too long, you get a line. It kind of uh, makes a. Now I don't know. People might be more exper experienced in it than I am painting with the uh, hot pressed. Whether that's just the brand I'm using. It tends to uh, 
retain the stroke once it's soaked into the paper a little bit. Or am I using the wrong side of the paper? I don't know. So I'm just going to have a little bit of colour on those heels to start with. And I'm going to go a bit more blue in them. And I want them to be quite blue, the Morven Hills, because they can look really blue on certain days. So I'm just bringing this wash down the page. I want to introduce a little bit of nice summer green because the trees were just to tint this area. We'll be coming back over it with other washes later just to build, you know, to uh, sort of consolidate everything and make it look a bit more structured. Lift that up. It's going to go to a slightly smaller brush a minute. I want to just run some bit of magenta, a slightly more purple colour here, just to tint those hills back there and down there. And then we'll have the field, it's going to be a nice sort of warm yellowy colour for starts with. Like that. And I'm going to go wrap down to that. I'm going to go down the whole page and tint the page in lots of nice colours just to make it look nice and colourful. And these hedgerows are full of colours. I want to be a bit more descriptive with the brushwork. yellow doesn't matter if I go over the fence a bit bit of raw sienna I always like that colour John a bit of blue believe it or not in there start adding a few little shadow areas but I don't want those colours to blend together too much. I want to keep them quite uh, so they don't mix together too much on the page at this stage. Let's balance it up with sort of some of the same colours on this side. Try and get some broken strokes so you get retain some white paper. Um, I just don't bit in there. I don't want too much white paper there. And we're nearly there. When you're practicing this sort of technique, doing that overall wash uh, to get rid of all the white paper, if, you, if you're starting out with it, it's not something you've done much before, done much of, start small with your paintings, don't go too big. Because with it, the, the, the whole just the size of the page can become a bit, bit daunting as you're painting and it's easy to lose your way um, there we go so we're going to let that dry come back to it and then build some structure into it and make it something a bit more like the sketch that we looked at to start with but we've got the colours down and we've got our foreground in but dark in the foreground and we'll just uh, make make the shape of the hills in the background by putting another wash over those uh, make a really nice summary feel to the painting we're back just let it dry and i'll be back okay there we go it's a better shot of the palette now okay um so that's all dried and now we're going to go straight into our hillside for that i just mixed a little bit of cobalt blue and some magenta and i've got some more there so just basically various mixes of that Adding a bit of green in it, maybe just here. I think just want to add a bluey green to this bit. I just want to soften some edges. 
cutting around some trees. At the tops of these lovely hills, I walk up there quite often. They're just beautiful. So we'll just capture those with some nice blue paints. And as we come down a bit, we'll add a little bit of yellow to it. And just suggest them like that. That's all you've got to do, but just vary that wash. Don't keep that wash the same colour. It doesn't really matter what you vary it to, as long as it's cool. I think you could probably get away with it. But uh, varying the wash is always a good, a good tip. So this is basically a nice simple landscape. There we go. Put that little line there, I just want to soften that. Now we'll wet, let that dry and then we'll get and put the trees that sit the trees that sit in the front of that hill will pop in a second and that the yeah the hill. Now we'll do a little bit of work to the foreground here. So it's got a little bit of blue and make some green up. A little bit of lemon yellow, a little bit of cobalt blue. We'll start suggesting some of these. You don't want to overdo it because it can. I, I'm guilty of this all the time. Is overdoing things like this and creating too much in the foreground it can be very I'm tempted to overwork it. It's better to suggest a, a little bit less um, suggestion. I think in watercolor is so much better than completely overcooking it and trying to do too much but sometimes it's us we can't help ourselves can we you know we just find ourselves wanting to well, we can think we can always improve what we've done and by doing that we often get to the stage where we're ruining it we ruin it a lot of the work's been done for me here um, I'll try and just zoom in on that for you you know, a lot of this work was done when I put the wet into wet in the foreground at the beginning. A lot of that uh, painting's been done for me naturally because there's some lovely little effects there that have happened that we can just leave and we don't want to cover those up. We want to sort of make the most of those and just leave them there. Um, they're a gift really because we've had not had to work very hard for them. So we'll leave those there. I'm just going to keep it zoomed in a bit for a minute. And I'm just going to just suggest some of these cooler colours to highlight some of this stuff there. Again, I don't want to do too much there. Just a nice suggestion is enough. Just to say, look. There's some little shrubby bushes there. Let, let the viewer make the let the viewer do the work with their eyes. Like a good like I think I've said this before, but like a good writer, he can say an awful lot in a couple of sentences. You know, he doesn't need to write too much to convey a description of something. A few words can do an awful lot, and that's I think I think that applies to painting too. I think an awful lot can be said. A little bit of blue in there, just to grey it out slightly. Just, just to subtly make that look. Now in a minute I'm just going to put some fox gloves in there. And then I'm not going to do an awful lot more with that. I'll just put a little bit in there just to... Got to put our gate in in a minute. There we go. I just want to now put some little bits up here. Uh, we'll put our trees in before I do that. I'll drop some water on that, wasn't too clever. 
while I'm painting, I'll just talk to you about a couple of things. Um, I was asked uh, what's the difference between what I do on YouTube and my, my courses I offer, because they said, what's the point of paying for a course if you're making uh, YouTube videos t teaching people how to paint? Well, all I can say to that is, you're right in some ways. You know, you can learn a lot from the YouTube videos, uh, an awful lot. And for a lot of people, probably that's enough. But what um, my videos, uh, my courses that I've made so far give, obviously an awful lot more in the sense of the on the tuition side of things. I explain things, I start from the whole process. It's almost brush by brush. Um, there's obviously paper, uh, we do lots of drawing practice prior to starting the painting of the scene um, and things like that. So in the courses that there is an awful lot more than what you get in YouTube basically. You know, I wouldn't have, it takes me weeks to put one of those courses together, um, the, the workshops together, it takes me absolutely weeks. Um, you know, my YouTube video takes me half a day for painting and then video editing and that sort of thing. So it's about half a day, something like that. But my courses, you know, now I've got, I'm on, I'm on two platforms. I operate on Udemy and I operate on Skillshare. My platform of choice, and the one I think people get the most benefit out of, is Skillshare. But, you know, that's up to you at the end of the day. Um... There are links to both videos, uh, but all my courses under the video if you're interested um, to join along, uh, to join in. But uh, I just, you know, highlighting what the difference is really between what I offer on YouTube to what I offer in a course. Basically, courses cover an awful lot more. And you get me to critique your paintings if you want that don't have to do that but if you want it the service is there and give advice and stuff like that private you know personal advice and stuff so that's something to think about if you're especially if you learn if you're just starting out maybe or you've only been painting for a few months and you want to kind of kick start your painting a bit then it's a good way of uh, getting yourself on the go well, I'm just going to dry this quickly with a hairdryer Okay, then I want to just put, sorry, then I want to just put some more foxgloves in because I just love putting foxgloves and they grow in abundance around here, I'm pleased to say, I grow lots of them and for that I just use a little bit of magenta with a little bit of, um, is it called magenta? Hold on a sec. Magenta. Sorry, it's not called magenta, it's called permanent rose. Um, permanent rose I use, uh, it's a Cotman colour, but it's a fantastic colour, really strong. It works well. And I'll just pop some of my fox gloves in quickly because I know that they, but I want to put these in before I um, put the darks in behind. So if I need to paint round them a bit, I can. And just use the tip of a brush. Just paint them in. Not too many. Don't overkill it. But uh, it does. I like it. And I just think they're such a part of the English landscape in summer, in many places. That's one place where I used to live in the Isles of Scilly. They used to grow there in abundance. And uh, Dig Digitalis, I think, is another name for them. It's obviously a Latin name, but a lot of people know, know them by that name. I think I'm right. I'm no plant expert, so if I'm wrong, just please tell me. Uh, but yeah, a lot of people... Uh, Know them by Digitalis, I think. There we go. And that's all I'm going to do. It's just a suggestion, really. Let me just have one more there. There's quite a few, so I'll have one back here, smaller. Probably, probably end up painting over it, but there we go. So, 
let's put our trees in no let's put our fence in first and for our fence we're just going to use um, raw sienna a bit of magenta on the side you see that yeah a bit of magenta on the side and a little bit of cobalt blue on the side so I don't want to do it all one flat brown or black or wood has lots of various colors in it so I'm just gonna use lots of colors and I want to make sure I don't go one solid line because the plants were growing round it slightly so we want to kind of it's quite old disappears off down there why should I put my hand over the painting and just paint your fence in like this now I'm going to put a little bit of blue and magenta in it, just to shift it a bit. Doesn't have to be anything, um, you know, difficult. Let's keep it simple. There's another one down the bottom there, but it was buried in the grass. So I'm just going to show bits of it. Just show bits of it because it was buried in the grass. So in case you didn't hear that, and then it comes down to there. And there's another one that comes down. So we're just keeping this a nice loose. Now we'll just come back and add a few bits to that in a minute. There's a bit of uh, rope or something around there. Just came down. Another post behind here. There's a couple of little posts sticking up here. another post in there where that was attached to okay it was something like that then there was a little bit of I just put a little bit of shadow down there just where it... okay And that's about it for the fence gate. I'm not doing an awful lot more to it. Just going to put some grasses up here because the grasses were growing up it, around it. There we go. This is where. When you're painting, and this is where often I go wrong, I start uh, fiddling. And it goes back to that thing that we said earlier. You know, you've done enough. You don't have to keep adding more. It's just something that you think you've got to do. Just adding some little bits in there. So, there we go. Right, we need to put our trees in the background now. So we're just going to put the trees in. They will put a middle ground in if you like. We'll put it in now. Creating the middle ground. For that we're going to just keep using some, keep it harmonious. We could have all sorts of fancy colours here if we wanted but we'll just stay with what we got. And I'm going to use some cobalt, lemon yellow and a touch of red, no actually a touch of alizarin crimson I think. Quite like the way that looks. Now, there are some, I want those to be a bit bluer. Those trees there.
Might as well, I've got to just be careful by my foxgloves not to. Uh, obliterate them. No point putting them in then spending all that time putting them in and then painting over them. I hope you can see that okay. So you start adding the middle ground and I like the way it comes together a bit more. It seems to. Uh, right, I'm going. Uh, these are going kind of away from us a bit, and they seem to get bluer. So we'll just make them somewhat bluer, and we'll just soften some of the edges a bit. And then there's some trees on the other side which were actually a little bit a bit warmer so I'm just getting a little bit of brown and some alyssum crimson just to see what I want to do with those mostly it's going to be green but uh, it's going to be a nice bluey green because they're quite a way off but we'll have a little bit of the a darker colour just in case I want to sort of get them to look a bit broken as well, so I'm going to use the tops of my, the side of my brush when I get my hand right, just to try and create a few sky holes in these, because they weren't solid clumps of trees, you could see through them. But unlike um, hot prayer, um, not surface paper, where you've got a tooth, that's easier to achieve. I actually, that's the one, if there is a downside, I suppose. I don't know if you can classify it as a downside. It's the one part of the smooth hot press paper I find a little bit tougher to. Right, just changing the colour there to a bluer colour. We're just going to the. There we go. Just try and keep it moving fast. If you try and go too slow, it's uh, you start getting problems really. Let's put some little details in the front. Yeah. In a minute, what we'll do is we'll take the tape off and have a proper look at it and see what we think. But that is basically what you know. This demonstration was about is how to use how to. I've used my sketch as an idea, and I've created a very simple landscape of somewhere I've been, and it, it's familiar to me. And I've not had to work very hard at all, really. It's uh, it's been quite straightforward. Okay. Before we finish, I want to do one last touch. That's in the main field. Don't forget to uh, come along to Pure Watercolour, my website. It's really starting to pick up now. There's lots, a lot more activity on the site, and I thank you all to all the members f for joining in and make and you know bringing it back to life a bit. You know these things are always hard to manage and do when you're working and doing all other things, but. I, I just I really, really appreciate the enthusiasm shown by everybody. Thank you very much. And there's special people that help me out as well, and they know who they are, so a big thank you to them too. Um, there we go. Well, I'm going to leave it. If I, if I start doing any more, I'm going to play around and fuss. I might just take out those bits of white paper there, because they distract my eye a bit. That's it. Okay, so I'll just take the paper off and have a look and see what it looks like uh, without the paper on it, the masking tape. Okay, there we go. There's the finished painting with all the tape taken off. It makes it nice and clear. So you can only ima you can imagine with a mount round it and framed up. It quite a pleasant picture. Um, 
yeah, it was a simple one to do. We used very limited pan out of colours. We used some cobalt blue, some cerulean blue, some uh, permanent rose, some Naples yellow in the sky, and then some lemon yellow, cobalt blue for the greens. Um, there was some permanent rose for the foxgloves that are in there. And then we just used various mixes of lemon yellow and um, cobalt blue with a touch of uh, alizarin crimson for the trees. And we varied that wash so we made it slightly bluer and greener just to make it more interesting. Okay, so it was pretty simple. We put a little bit of raw sienna as well in the foreground here just to warm it up. And by warming it up, it brings it, it, brings it closer in, doesn't it? Okay, so I hope you enjoy it. If you're interested in buying any of my paintings, I'll give myself a plug here. All my paintings that I do up for um, YouTube are currently on eBay. Um, I send anywhere uh, within reason. Um, I tr you know, so if you're interested, you can check that out. Uh, but yeah, there we go. So uh, thanks very much for watching, and I'll be more videos coming soon. And also the links for my Skillshare courses uh, under the video. So thanks for watching, and bye for now.